Welcome to my video on the Season 3 Challenge 3 of the Just Name It series. Stick around until the end to learn how you can build this dashboard. At the top we see the answers in terms of averages for certain features. We then have a map type of view that visualizes for each zip code in the data set averages in terms of price, property size, and so on and so forth. But then at the bottom we see scatter plots for those features in the data set that are correlated with the price. Let's now look into what this challenge is all about. It is about a data set related to real estate prices and the overall task is you're a real estate agent working in a new city and to perform well your first task and worth understanding the houses in the region better. A colleague shares a data set with you and now it's time for you to explore it. What has been the average house price, lot size in acres and living space in square feet in the city according to a data set? How are prices distributed and correlated with housing features? What other insights can you gather from this data set? Without further ado, let's dive into it. The data set is being provided as a CSV file. I have saved this into my workflow data area and used a CSV reader node to read it from there. To start with, let's use a statistics table of view that comes with NIME out of the box to understand the data set a little bit better and see if we can maybe already answer some questions with it. This view is really useful as it tells us a lot of information about the data in each of the columns. Each of the columns you can find in a separate row in the name column in this table. You can see the type, and very important also if there are any missing values and if so, how many. This time around we are lucky as there are no missing values in this data set. That means we don't really have to worry too much about cleaning it or preprocessing it before we get started. Amongst the data provided for the individual columns is also the mean value which you can find on the very right. Part of the task was, amongst other things, to find the average house price and lot size in the living space. So we should be aiming to answer those questions by the data provided in this table. If we take a closer look, we can find columns for price, for square feet living and square feet lot size. That's very good, although we will have to convert the lot size from square feet to acres. We can see though that the average price for these houses is 540,000 approximately and the average living space in square foot is around 2,080 square feet. You can also notice that there are some columns that deal with qualitative features, for example waterfront view or condition. There are also three columns related to the location, zip code, latitude and longitude which might be useful in case we want to visualize that on a geo map later on. Let's now proceed with the square feet to acres conversion. In order to convert that, we need to divide this number of square feet by 43,560, according to Google. We use a mass formula node to add a new column acres underscore lot that contains a relevant formula. If we now execute the mass formula node, and then open up the statistics table again, we can inspect the statistics including the mean or so for the new columns that we've just added. The average lot size in acres is 0.347. With some questions solved already, let's progress to plotting the answers. But how do we actually access the statistics tab outside of the tab? The mass formula node only has one output tab and that doesn't give us the statistics. Well, there's an easy solution for that. If we want to keep it really simple, we add a statistics view node. This node allows us in the configuration dialog to select the columns that we want to show and the KPIs that we want to calculate. And the node then outputs it into a table view, which we can also use inside a component. If the table style view is not good enough, then there's a workaround for that. You can use a statistics node to exactly obtain the tail that we need, you add a column filter node to filter for the column name column and the mean column, then you transpose it and add another column filter 
of theta for the columns named price, square foot living, and acre slot. After that you can use that in another visualization. I will skip that in my solution for now. Let's now focus on the correlations between the different other features and the price. I'm not a data science expert, I will keep things very simple and focus on linear correlation for now. NIME has a linear correlation node which calculates the correlations of all the different columns amongst each other. We use this node to review the correlations in the correlation matrix, which is very handy, and then pass the middle port, which is the correlation matrix as a table, to column theta. We will only keep the column price, as we are looking for correlations between price and all the other features, and not between other columns with each other. Next, we use a row filter to remove any rows containing a correlation of less than 0.5. This is just a threshold that I found useful with the help of Google and ChatGPT. We then use the table transposer node to move the rows to columns. That will make it very simple for us as next step to use a reference column filter, remove any columns from the main data set that are not strongly correlated with the column price. Reviewing the table with the columns that are strongly correlated, we can see that there are four columns in total that have a medium to strong correlation between 0.3 and 0.7, and there's one actually that has a correlation of 0.702, which is a very strong correlation, which is the square foot living column. To wrap up the correlation exercise, we will now go ahead and plot a scatter plot for the correlation between price and each of the other five columns. In the scatter plot configuration, we will increase the number of maximum rows to 30,000 so that every single data point is surely covered and we adjust the header. Then we simply copy the first scatter plot four times and always make sure that we change the columns that it's used on the vertical axis while keeping the horizontal axis always on price. With all five scatter plots selected, we then go ahead and click the Create Component button to tidy up our workflow a little bit and group the five scatter plots into a component. Last thing I want to add to my solution is a map type of view of all the average prices, average bedroom numbers, and so on and so forth. I noticed that for the 21,000 data points, there are only 70 different zip codes, so we will do this by aggregating and averaging all the values by zip codes and then using the latitude and longitude coordinates with the geospatial view extension of NIME to plot them on a map. This is quickly done by adding a goodbye node. We group by zip code and in the manual aggregation tab we then add all the values that we want to average and show later on. And very important, we pick the first aggregation met method for the latitude and the longitude column. We pass the data to the let slash long to geometry node. And in the configuration, we select the aggregated latitude and longitude columns accordingly. With the geometry columns added, we pass the data to a geospatial view node. In the configuration dialog, the geometry column will be picked up automatically. We can select those columns that we want to show in the tooltip, which are all the mean prices in the zip code. Last but not least, we define the marker size. I chose 10. This is what the final map then looks like. Pretty, isn't it? Let's now finalize the solution. Select all the relevant nodes that you want to turn into a dashboard and click the Create Component button. And there we have it, the solution is ready to be submitted.